Jerry John Rawlings, also called J.J. Rawlings, was a military and political leader in Ghana who twice, in 1979 and 1981, overthrew the government and seized power. Aside the fact that he was one of the most revolutionary leaders Ghana has ever had and the many, many, many accolades he has to his name, Jerry John Rawlings, popularly known as J.J. Rawlings, also had a softer side to him. He was an artist. His second period of rule, which was in 1981 to 2001, afforded Ghana political stability and competent economic management. Rawlings was the son of a Scottish father and a Ghanaian mother. He was educated at Achimota College and the Military Academy at Teshi. He was commissioned a second lieutenant in the Ghana Air Force in 1969 and became a flight lieutenant and expert pilot skilled in aerobatics. In June 1979, Rawlings and other junior officers led a successful military coup with the purported aim of purging the military and public life of widespread corruption. He and his armed forces revolutionary council ruled for 112 days during which time the former heads of state were tried and executed. Rawlings then yielded power to a freely elected civilian president, Hila Liman, who promptly retired Rawlings from the Air Force. Rawlings continued to be a popular figure, however, and on, 21st December, and on December 31st, 1981, after two years of weak civilian rule during which Ghana's economy continued to deteriorate, Rawlings overthrew Liman's government, accusing it of leading a nation down to total economic ruin. Rawlings established a provisional National Defense Council as the new government and imprisoned Liman and some 200 other politicians. People's defense committees were set up in neighborhoods. When the failure of these populist measures had become clear by 1983, Rawlings reversed course and adopted conservative economic policies, including dropping subsidies and price controls in order to reduce inflation, privatizing many state-owned companies and devaluing the currency in order to stimulate exports. These free market measures sharply revived Ghana's economy, which by the early 1990s had one of the highest growth rates in Africa. In 1992, in the first presidential elections held in Ghana since 1979, Rawlings was chosen as president. He was re-elected in 1996 and stepped down from the presidency in early 2001. Jerry John Rawlings was a Ghanaian military officer and politician who led the country from 1981 to 2001 and also for a brief period in 1979. He led a military junta until 1992 and then served two terms as the democratically elected president of Ghana. Rawlings came to power in Ghana as a flight lieutenant of the Ghana Air Force following a coup d'etat in 1979. Prior to that, he led an unsuccessful coup attempt against the ruling military government on 15th May 1979, just five weeks before scheduled democratic elections were due to take place. After handing power over to a civilian government, he took back control of the country on 31st December 1981 as the chairman of the Provisional National Defense Council, PNDC. In 1992, Rawlings resigned from the military, founded the National Democratic Congress, that's the NDC, and became the first president of the Fourth Republic. He was re-elected in 1996 for four more years. After two terms in office, the limit, according to the Ghanaian constitution, Rawlings endorsed his vice president, John Atamels, as a presidential candidate in 2000. Rawlings served as the African Union envoy to Somalia. He unfortunately died in November 2020 at age 73. Jerry John Rawlings was born Jerry Rawlings John on 22nd June 1947 in Accra, Ghana to Victoria Agbotui and Ewe from Jelukope, Keta and James Ramsey John, a chemist from Castle Douglas in Scotland.
Rollins attended Achimota School and a military academy in Teshi. He was married to Nana Kunedu Ajiman, who he met while at Achimota College. They had three daughters, Zenato Rollins, Yasantwa Rollins, Amina Rollins, and one son, Kimathi Rollins. Rollins finished his secondary school education at Achimota College in 1967. He joined the Ghana Air Force shortly afterwards. In March 1968, he was posted to Takrade in Ghana's Western Region to continue his studies. He graduated in January 1969 and was commissioned as a pilot officer, winning a coveted Speedbird Trophy as the best cadet in flying the Su-7 ground attack supersonic jet aircraft as he was killed in aerobatics. He earned the rank of flight lieutenant in April 1978. During his service with the Ghana Air Force, Rawlings perceived a deterioration in the discipline and morale due to corruption in the Supreme Military Council. As promotion brought him into contact with the privileged classes and their social values, his views of the injustices in society hardened. He was thus regarded with some unease by the SMC. After the 1979 coup, he involved himself with the student community of the University of Ghana, where he developed a more leftist ideology through reading and discussion of social and political ideas. Rawlings grew discontented with Ignatius Scutu Echampon's government, which had come to power through a coup in January 1972. Echampon was accused not only of corruption, but also of maintaining Ghana's dependency on pre-colonial powers in a situation which led to economic decline and impoverishment. Rawlings was part of the Free Africa Movement, an underground movement of the military officers who wanted to unify Africa through a series of coups. On 15th May 1979, five weeks prior to a civilian election, Rawlings and six other soldiers staged a coup against the government of General Fred Akufu, but failed and were arrested by the military. Rawlings was publicly sentenced to death in a general court martial and imprisoned. Although his statement on the social injustices that motivated his actions won him civilian sympathy, while awaiting execution, Rawlings was sprung from custody on 4 June 1979 by a group of soldiers, claiming that the government was corrupt beyond redemption and that new leadership was required for Ghana's development. He led a group in a coup to oust the Akufu government and Supreme Military Council. Shortly afterwards, Rawlings established and became the chairman of the 15-member Armed Forces Revolutionary Council, primarily composed of junior officers. He and the AFRC ruled for 112 days and arranged the execution by firing squad of eight military officers, including Generals Kote, John Amedume, Roger Feli, and Utuka, as well as three former Ghanaian heads of state, Echampo, Akufu, and Akwesi Efrifa. These executions were dramatic events in the history of Ghana, which had previously suffered few instances of political violence. Rawlings later implemented a much wider house cleaning exercise involving the killings and abductions of over 300 Ghanaians. Elections were held on time shortly after the coup. On 24 September 1979, power was peacefully handed over by Rawlings to President Hila Liman, whose People's National Party, PNP, had the support of Nkrumah's followers. Two years later, on 31st December 1981, Rawlings ousted President Hila Liman in a coup d'etat, claiming that civilian rule was weak and the country's economy was deteriorating. The killings of the Supreme Court's justices, Cecilia Cranton Ado, Frederick Sarkodie, and Kwejo Eje Ejipon, military officers Major Sam Akwa and Major Dasanan also occurred during the second military rule of Rawlings. However, unlike the 1979 executions, these persons were abducted and killed in secret and it is unclear who was behind their murders, though Amate Kwe and four others were convicted of murdering the justices in Aqua and were executed in 1982. Believing the Liman regime to be unable to resolve Ghana's neo-colonial economic dependency, Rawlings led a second coup against Liman and indicted the entire political class on 31st December 1981. In place of Liman's People National Party, Rawlings established the Provisional National Defense Council, PNDC, as the official government. Rawlings hosted state visits from revolutionaries from other countries. 
more famously, Rollins reversed Lehman's boycott of Gaddafi's Libya, allowing the Black Stars to compete in the 1982 African Cup of Nations. The team won the AFCON trophy for the fourth time, their last win as of 2020. Although the PNDC claimed to be a representative of the people, it lacked experience in the creation and implementation of clear economic policies. Rawlings, like many of his predecessors, attributed current economic and social problems to the trade malpractices and other antisocial activities of a few business people. In December 1982, the PNDC announced its four-year economic program of establishing a state monopoly on export-import trade with a goal of eliminating corruption surrounding import licenses to shift trade away from dependency on Western markets. Unrealistic price controls were imposed on the market and enforced through coercive acts, especially against business people. This resolve to employ state control over the economy is best demonstrated by the destruction of the Makola number no. 1 market. The PNDC established Workers' Defense Committees, WDCs, and People's Defense Committees, PDCs, to mobilize the population to support radical changes to the economy. Rawlings established the Economic Recovery Program suggested by the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund in 1982 due to the poor state of the economy after 18 months of attempting to govern it through administrative controls and mass mobilization. The policies implemented caused a dramatic currency devaluation. The removal of price controls and social service subsidies which favored farmers over urban workers and privatization of some state-owned enterprises and restraints on government spending. Funding was provided by bilateral donors reaching 800 million U.S. dollars in 1987 and 1988 and 900 million U.S. dollars in 1989. Between 1992 to 1996, Rawlings eased control over the judiciary and civil society, allowing a more independent Supreme Court and the publication of independent newspapers. Opposition parties operated outside of parliament and held rallies and press conferences. Given the various issues with the 1992 elections, the 1996 elections were a great improvement in terms of the um, electoral oversight. Voter registration were recomplied with close to 9.2 million voters registering at nearly 19,000 police stations, which the opposition had largely approved after party agents had reviewed the list. An emphasis on transparency led Ghana's non-governmental organizations to create the network of domestic election observers. We trained nearly 4,100 local poll watchers. The organization was popular across political parties and civic groups. On the day of the election, more than 60,000 candidate agents monitored close to all polling stations and were responsible for directly reporting results to their respective political party leaders. The parallel vote tabulation system allowed polling sites to compare their results to the official ones released by the Electoral Commission. The two major contenders of the 1996 elections were Rawlings' NDC and John Kufour's Great Alliance, an amalgamation of the New Patriotic Party, that's the NPP, and the People's Convention's Party, PCP. The Great Alliance, based on their platform on Austin Rawlings, and attacked the incumbent government for its poor fiscal policies. However, they were unable to articulate a clear positive message of their own or plans to change the current economic policy. As Ghana was heavily dependent on international aid, local leaders had minimal impact on the economy. The Electoral Commission reported that Rawlings had won by 57%, with Kofor obtaining 40% of the vote. Results by district were similar to those in 1992, with the opposition winning the Ashanti region and some constituencies in the eastern and greater Accra. And Rawlings winning in his ethnic home, the voter region, and faring war in every other region. The NDC took 134 seats in the assembly compared to the opposition 66, and the MPP took 60 seats in the parliament. The 1992 constitution limits a president to two terms, even if they were non consensive Rawlings did not attempt to amend the document to allow him to run for a third term in 2000. He retired in 2001 and was succeeded by John Ajekun Kufo, his main rival and opponent in 1996.
It was the first time in Ghanaian history that a sitting government peacefully transferred power to an elected member of the opposition. In November 2000, Rawlings was named the first International Year of Volunteers 2001 eminent persons by UN Secretary General Kofi Annan attending various events and conferences to promote volunteerism. In October 2010, Rawlings was named as the African Union Envoy to Somalia. In November 2010, he attended the inauguration of President of Suriname and took a tour of the country. He was especially interested in the Ghanaian origins of the Maroon people. Rawlings delivered lectures at universities, including Oxford University in England. Rawlings continued his heavy support for NDC. In July 2019, he went on a three-day working trip to Burkina Faso in the capacity of chairman of the Thomas Sankara Memorial Committee. In September 2019, he paid a tribute on behalf of the President of the People of Ghana when he led a delegation to the funeral of Robert Mugabe, the late President of Zimbabwe. Rollins died on 12 November 2020 at Kolebu Teaching Hospital in Accra, a week after being admitted for a short-term illness in Ghana. His death came nearly two months after that of his mother on 24 September 2020. The president, Nana Akufuado, declared a seven-day period of mourning in his honor and flags were flown at half-mast. His family members appealed to the government of Ghana to bury him in Keta in the Volta region. A schedule for signing the book of condolence was opened in his memory. His funeral, originally planned for 23rd December 2020, was postponed at the request of his family. From 24 to 27 January 2021, funeral ceremonies were organized at Accra in Rawlins' memory. A requiem mass for Jerry Rawlins was held at the Holy Spirit Cathedral on 24 January 2021, followed by a vigil at the Air Force Officers' Mess in Accra. His body will be laid in state at the foyer of Accra International Conference Center from 25th to 26th January 2020. There will also be traditional rites performed by the Anlo'ewe people of his maternal ancestry. On 27 January 2021, a state funeral will be attended by political leaders and dignitaries and be held at the Black Star Square before his burial at the military cemetery at Burma Camp with full military honors including the sounding of the last post by Ami and a 21 gun salute.